Welcome back here inside Bell MTS Iceplex. Rory McGore and Theo Tuttlecluck with you. Theo, quite a good group of boys and girls there that had a obviously a trip of a lifetime going to Ottawa. I mean, what can you say about 11 and 12 year olds? First of all, being selected to represent not only Southern Manitoba but all of Manitoba. Go to Ottawa, Ontario, the inaugural 150 Bell Capital Cup, and I mean the stories that these young children have for the rest of their life is so crucial. I mean. You don't understand until you actually get to experience something like this as a team, as a player, with your parents. And just something we want to touch base on real quick is how impressive it was that these young players represented, you know, two RMs, six towns, 6,100 people in southern Manitoba. And they did such a great job. I mean, developing relationships with the three territories, especially none of it, the great story with them. Uh, going in the underground tunnels between the Parliament and Senate. Of course, watching a Senators hockey game and the Ottawa not winning, unfortunately. The bus rides, uh, the curfews, the itineraries, everything was done professionally by the great group of parents and their managers. And talking about a, a town and a group of towns that come across and represent and fundraise, just the support that came from that group of uh, for those players was very impressive. And if you want to catch that interview as well, that's also on our Manitoba Sports Network Facebook page. So we have a gentleman in the middle of us, Rory. Y yes, if you're wondering who is in the middle, Eric Vincent will be joining us with Football Manitoba. That minor league hockey report was brought to you by GT Hockey. Go to gtperformancehockey.com. Eric Vincent, very well, very pleased to have you on the show. After a quick commercial break, we're going to bring you in. You're going to fill us in with everything Football Manitoba. All right, stay tuned along the Manitoba Sports Network. Hi, I'm Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here, and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations, and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries, and I direct bill to MPI, WCB, and other third party insurers. Thank you, come see us. Welcome back here, Bell MTS Iceplex, Rory McGore and Theo Tutkaluk, and of course in the middle, Eric Vincent, Football Manitoba. Eric, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you guys doing this morning? Honestly, fantastic. Wonderful Saturday. Great weather outside. And January 27th, January 27th, uh, never too early, never too late to talk about football, especially here in Manitoba. Uh, what most people don't kind of realize is football is really 12 months a year. Um, we're really, really busy in the fall, but we've got a ton of wonderful programming going on both at the youth level as well as at our high-performance provincial team level right now. Well, you actually mentioned here Christmas breaks. Like you said, 12 months a year, even during the Christmas break, you guys ran two camps, a flag one and a tackle one. 200 kids came out to that. So uh, throughout the Christmas break, we're really looking at an opportunity to develop our youth football players. Um, also, the parents are looking for some cheap babysitting during Christmas break, so that worked out really well on our part. Um, just after Christmas, on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of December, we held a flag football skills camp at the South Complex at the U of M. We had about 80 players show up. Um, kids all the way from age 7 all the way through age 15 were participating. Has there been an uptick in parents looking towards the flag football option? Has there been a growth in the amount of kids you have come out wanting to try to learn not the sport of football tackle-wise, but, I mean... 
uh, the electric game of flag football, which really utilizes the speed and agility and elusiveness of a lot of these players. So our uh, Football Manitoba Spring Flag Football League is up to about 1,200 participants now. So uh, for a lot of the players, that goes from age 7 all the way through age 17. And for a lot of players, it offers kind of an initial exposure to football without the contact, without the equipment. And what we're really starting to see now is a lot of older players, our high school level, our midget level players, um, defensive backs, quarterbacks, receivers, they're starting to look at flag football as a way to develop that skill set during the offseason. Right now, we've got a Winnipeg High School Football League flag football league going on during the winter. And that's where we're starting to see a lot of crossover from our tackle players actually playing flag because they realize the value of that flag football as well. Absolutely. And I know you wanted to hit home about football Manitoba and for especially the youth. Um, what can they accomplish by, by joining football Manitoba, by uh, football as a sport? And, I mean, the programs that you have now are, are second to none, really. I mean, so what is going on for the youth inside of Manitoba in terms of football? So uh, especially in this year, last year I actually personally had the opportunity to go to uh, Ottawa in March to receive a community leadership training. And uh, this is really kind of top down from Football Canada. The idea is we're really trying to focus on skill development at a younger age to get these kids developing appropriately, not necessarily with contact, but just working on football from that young age all the way through our long-term athlete development model. Um, so at Christmas time, we had that 80-person flag camp, and then we had a similar tackle skills camp just after New Year's. That one was at the new North Complex on Leela. Um, I was personally on hand as the head coach at that camp, and we had almost 120 kids at that one. So now we're adding a very similar camp at spring break, which should hopefully see about 130, 140 kids at the North Complex. And then we're also about to kick off our high performance program, which will see these kids come through that youth level and then slowly make their way into our U16 and U18 provincial team programs. And we're not just talking about um, males here, because in February, you guys are starting out an all-girls league, which to your knowledge is the only one in Canada. So uh, one of the big pushes from Football Canada right now is to create female-only streams of participation. Um, at younger ages, it's okay for the girls to be playing co-ed, but ideally, if possible, we want to have every opportunity for girls to play football with girls. So for flag football, our spring league over the last couple of years hasn't actually had an all-girls division. So what we're doing this year is running a pilot program with high school-age girls in February and March, um, four weekends in a row of flag football hoping that if we drum up enough interest with that, we can actually offer an all-girls division in our spring flag league once that kicks off. Okay, so i got one more for you before Theo picks your brain here. Uh, just talk about the International Bowl in Arlington, Texas. Uh, just a great experience for a lot of these people. So uh, every year after our national championships, um, at the U18 level, they select a Team Canada, which goes down to, in this year, at the actual Cowboys Stadium, and they go down and compete in the International Bowl against uh, the U.S. team. So we had a U18 team go down, we had a U19 team, and we had a U16 Team Canada West and Team Canada East. So from our Team Canada West, which was picked from the U16 Western Regionals, we had eight kids from Team Manitoba head down. From our U18 team, we had two players head down, two linebackers. And then for the U19 team, which actually includes first-year CIS players, we had another three players go down, two of which play locally with our U of M Bisons, Shea Weeks and... Uh, Cole Adamson from Oak Park were down there as well. And we also had uh, Wellen Slater, who's uh, a local high school product out of the St. John's Tigers. So Manitoba well represented. Absolutely. The boys had an absolute blast down there. And uh, we also had three coaches that were down there. Yeah. So our head coach from our U16 program, Coach Jeff Reddy, as well as his receiver coach, Drew Leskowicz, they were down with the U16 program. And then Coach Donald Burrell, who was the head coach of our U18 team, he was down coaching the defensive backs and the special teams with the U18 squad. Beautiful. Deal. So, Eric... We're not going to dive back into the history, but we'll get right to the crux of the matter here. Starting young kids on football, we talked a lot about the flag. Tell us about this first down program that's coming into Winnipeg this upcoming year. So uh, one of the programs that we're looking to run, and this came directly from Football Canada, in March when I was there actually, there was a, a group of us from across the country that are actually working on developing the first down program. So the first down program is aimed at the U6 level as well as the U8 level. So what we're trying to do is get these young kids and really focus on developing fundamental movement skills, not just football, but let's run, let's throw, let's catch, let's kick, and then let's transfer those skills into the fundamental football skills. 
And then once they get old enough, we can start to add in the contact and look at the tackling and the blocking. But you're going to have a hard time tackling someone if you don't know how to run and you don't know how to hit anything. So really working on those fundamental skills at that young age. Let's get them physically literate, and then let's let them play flag football and tackle football. That sounds like great news. And when is this program going to be started and running? How do people get registered into the U6, U8 program? So uh, this spring, Football Manitoba is going to be running kind of the pilot program for first down, where it's going to be initiated by Football Manitoba. We're going to be bringing in coaches from all of our different community clubs so they can get familiar with the programming, um, work together as coaches, and kind of figure out what that's going to look like at their individual clubs. The goal is that moving forward, our individual clubs, your Fort Gary Lions, your St. James Rods, your San Mateo Mustangs, your Falcons Football Club, they can start running kind of their own version of the first down program with the coaches that have received the training with us. That sounds like great news. Now, we talked at the beginning about the importance and the growth in numbers with the flag football programs here in Winnipeg. Have you as a group in, and in being involved in football Manitoba, how has, you know, the contact aspect of the sport been gaining or getting more attention or not more attention based on the amount of injuries? And how is football Manitoba coaching and helping the players understand the importance of proper hitting and the protocols and screening protocols to making sure that these players are able to return to play? So one of the big ones right now is about five or six years ago, Football Canada rolled out our Safe Contact program. So Safe Contact is our eight-hour certification course as coaches must take in order to coach football. Um, I'm also employed by Football Manitoba as a learning facilitator, so I actually help teach the NCCP clinics. Um, I facilitated approximately 12 Safe Contact clinics up to this point, um, and it's really split into two parts. We focus on concussion awareness. Um, I mean, don't want to scare anyone with the C word, but that's something it is it is true. There are concussions in sport, but if you look at the data, the rates of incidents of concussions are not significantly higher in football than any other sport. What I think is what's happening is with these, these high-profile cases in the NHL, in the NFL that we're seeing in the news, we're just becoming more and more aware of it. So to us, it's just very important to us to get the point across that we're doing everything we can to make football as safe as possible for the youth. We're making sure that our coaches are trained so that the old attitude of maybe 20, 30 years ago, let's just go out there and hit each other, where now we're focusing on, well, how much contact do we need in practice? How do we safely teach our kids to hit properly, to block properly, so that we try and avoid these things as much as possible? Then we also work on, in the inevitable case, that if there is a concussion, we're properly working those athletes through the return to play protocol, and we're never hurrying an athlete back into play. With obviously you mentioned, you know, concussion, and it's become such, you know, a, a, a global thing in the past five, ten years. Where do you see flag football in the next ten years? And is football Manitoba really gearing up towards a big shift in what the parents put their maybe six, seven, or eight-year-olds kids through? If it's now they want to play football, is it maybe now considered for them to go to flag instead of contact with the whole uh, situation surrounding concussions? So one of the big shifts that we're kind of seeing, um, they're starting to track this data in the U.S. actually, and tackle football registration is down significantly in the States, but we're seeing a very large rise in flag football. I mean, for us at the end of the day, as long as kids are playing football, they're playing a team sport, they're working together, they're learning those lessons, more kids playing football is what we want. What we're really starting to see is we've also implemented, and this is based on the recommendations from Football Canada, we're going to be slowly moving our age groups up for next year. So previously in Manitoba, in our cruncher age group, our seven-year-olds would have already been playing tackle football. This year, we're going to move that up to a U10 age group, so eight- and nine-year-olds. So those seven-year-olds are just going to be playing flag. What we're really trying to focus on is that those younger age groups developing the proper fundamental movement skills and physical literacy and getting them into flag football, getting them into that first down physical literacy program so that they're physically ready to play tackle football at those older ages. So we talked about the fundamentals off the field, on the field, sorry, and I think that's a great uh, lead-in because, you know, I've got a five-year-old, and he loves running around with a football. So, I mean, teaching him the fundamentals, the moving, the skills, the bob and weave, the spin, all that jazz, the elusiveness we got to. The fundamentals off the field, and well, just a quick lead-in to our – recently this past week, Mr. Vince McMahon got up on stage and decided to introduce the XFL season or part two What's your thoughts on uh, maybe this whole XFL thing? And, you know, do you think it'll fly more than a season? 
Well, last time it happened, it didn't last all that long. No. Um, but a five learned one thing, and I think there's kind of a disconnect that we're seeing at that professional sports level in the NFL as well where – People want to see big plays. They want to see big hits. There's a reason that the UFC exists. People want to see people doing exciting things. And the FX, the XFL can provide a, a product that is exciting and that people will watch. There might be a place for that. Um, I would rather see a world where we learn to appreciate football fundamentals. And one day I can look up on YouTube excellent fundamental football tackles rather than biggest hits of 2017 and really start to appreciate the, the true beauty of the game of football for what it is, not just for the contact, not just for the big hits, but for all of those other aspects of the game, right? The teamwork, the fact that everyone has a role on the team. I still believe that football is the greatest team game there is. Eric Vincent joining us from Football Manitoba. This interview is brought to you by Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. Uh, Eric, or, or Theo, you as well, uh, before... We, uh, we let you go here and get on with, with your Saturday. Anything that we missed here or just anything that you want to throw out there on part of yourself, on part of football, Manitoba, that we, that we haven't covered yet here today? Uh, one of the big ones I'd maybe like to look at is uh, we've got our high-performance program coming up. Um, so we've actually made some changes this year. Our high-performance program operates at the U16 and the U18 level. And some of the changes we've made this year is we've, uh, we're going to be hosting our Phase 1 ID camp on April 14th and 15th. We're holding the entire camp over one single weekend, um, trying to get true representation from the entire province of Manitoba as much as possible. I mean, we alluded to earlier in our hockey report about some of those hotbeds of talent that we have all over the province. We've got phenomenal football players in Swan River, in Nipawa, in Brandon, in Surris, in Verdon, and trying to make sure that if you're a quality football player that deserves to be on this team, no matter where you live in our province, you can make it out to our selection process and you can be part of this team. So we're really excited that that process is coming up. And uh, we've actually got a bus of about 40 to 50 Thunder Bay athletes that register through Football Manitoba that are going to come into our first phase as well. So registration is going to be going live next week for uh, our phase one for our high performance programs. And we're really excited about some of the things coming up with that team. Yeah, so registration next week. So like you mentioned, anyone from Nipua, from Surus, who are talented in football, but just maybe haven't found that avenue to get into what you're talking about. Next week, registration starting, and the date's April... April 14th and 15th, 14th our Phase and 15th. 1 ID camp. Well, Theo? You know what, Eric? It's been great to understand and great to learn about the flag football program, especially what Football Manitoba is doing for the young athletes. I'm going to leave it with this. Next Sunday, Patriots, Eagles. Are you fly, Eagles, fly, or are you going to be putting a sixth ring on Tom Brady's finger? It sounds cliche, but I really just want to watch a good football game. I've watched too many Super Bowls where it's a blowout or one team chokes. As long as it's a three-point game or a two-point game with three minutes left in the game, I have a feeling that whatever team ends up with that ball with two minutes left in the fourth quarter, somebody's going to drive the field and get a Super Bowl MVP. Well, there you have it. Eric Vincent. The political answer that we didn't expect from no a guy that played, no the guy that played defensive football his entire life. He's being a falcon. I'm a national. Great to have you on the show, Eric. Thank you very much for joining us. Melody Bond and Physiotherapy. We'll see you guys after a short break.